as we can see, it alters what, what we're experiencing. Nevertheless, close your eyes. Now I'm going to freeze that pattern for a minute. You can open your eyes again, and I'll actually show you what you did. See that alpha? Remember I said some people produce alpha as soon as they close their eyes? Alexis is one of them. So we have this immediate access to alpha waves. Now whether that will stay or not, when she sits with eyes closed for a period of time, I don't know, and we'd have to do more experimentation. But you can see how easy the alpha is to access for some people, how it comes out so immediately. And back with the eyes open without the alpha. Why don't you try that again? <laughs> That's really very good access. That's a little, a little quicker than some. Do you work with, uh, do you meditate? Uh-huh. <laughs> I picked a good guinea pig. <laughs> OK. Why don't you keep your eyes closed and just do a little meditation, if you can, in this circumstance? Now, if I'm looking at this pattern in a, a dim, in a session at home, I'm going to see that her beta is reducing. And I'm not going to worry about that too much, especially in this situation. Her alpha is excellent. Her alpha may be a little too strong. Um, if this were a session at home, we might need to reduce that a little. It might be overriding the beta. But that is the brainwave I'm the most interested in. And I've frozen that here so that you can see this pattern. That's at 4.5 hertz. That's her theta coming out. Can you see the, the meditation pattern that she has? And that's with that little bit of beta there, we're, we really have a near awakened mind pattern here. So this is a real nice brainwave pattern. You might want to see that just so you, you know what you're doing. Whoops. I just froze that. So what I would like to get you to do, do you understand what I'm talking about? Can you see the relationship between that and the, and the pictures I've drawn? So that's very nice. Thank you for your, I think, I think your demonstration needs a <laughs> round of applause. <laughs> it's a, it's, it's a, a challenging thing to face coming up and showing your brain waves in front of a lot of people. It really is, yeah. I do, but I'm looking at the time, and it would take me some time to do it. I mean, I can't say, do this. Well, let's try one thing. We'll try one thing real quick. Robert, how much time do I have? How much time do you have? <laughs> I can keep going all day. <laughs> Five or 10 minutes? OK. Um, close your eyes again. The question, the question was, can I do something that will affect her brain waves and help her develop theta? Um, to do that, I would take her on a fairly long relaxation. I didn't get it out, but I work also with the body-mind connection. I work with skin resistance or skin conductance, um, depending on which perspective you're looking at, and relate the, the relaxation to the brain waves. And that's a whole other added aspect. And I would start by doing a deep relaxation because uh, theta is most accessible in a relaxed state. But one thing you might do, Alexis, is just start to visualize or imagine the colors of blue and purple. And just surround yourself in blue and purple. OK, could you see the impulses coming? And that would take a little time, and I would, I would weave it into quite an intricate guided fantasy if, if I were to be trying to shape her brainwave pattern. One thing I do would be to be in this situation, 
look at the feedback. And this is called biomonitoring. It's not called biofeedback because she's not getting the feedback right now. I am. I'm monitoring her brain waves. And I would change what I tell her to do in accordance with what I am seeing, like that, the, the introduction of the, the purple, which it does affect uh, theta brain waves. And through that, I would gradually shape the brain wave pattern to where we think we can get to or where we want to be at that time, and then give her the feedback. And then say, this is it. What you're experiencing right now is where you want to be. So it combines biofeedback with biomonitoring. How, how does food affect that? Um, it's an interesting question. I'm going to lump that in with another couple of categories of questions and answer the whole thing, which might answer some other questions. How does food affect it? How does anger affect it? How does love affect it? How does sex affect it? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Everybody is affected by those things in their own individual way, and so if you are used to food, food might calm you down and give you a pleasant sense of relaxation and stimulate your alpha waves. It might make you lethargic and put you to sleep. It might give you energy and stimulate beta waves. So it depends on the on the individual. There, I, I really avoid as much as possible the generics because although I have created generics um, and I will be coming out with a list of generics at some point, uh, individual workings of your own brain waves are very important. And what's important is if it affects you once this way, it's going to affect you again this way. So people say, should I come to a session and not drink any coffee? Well, do you normally drink coffee? If you normally drink coffee, don't not drink it before you come because then you won't have your normal brain waves. If you normally don't drink coffee, certainly don't drink it before you come. So we want to have your normal brain wave pattern so that we can see what it is and affect it and gradually train it into a better brain wave pattern. We have a memory capability was the question. Um, the Mind Mirror 3 that we have has a recording capacity of half an hour and it will record into the machine what the brainwave patterns are and then play that back to you for the half hour so that you can do a half hour meditation by yourself and then look at the pattern. There's also an event marker here where you can, on this one, where you can put a, turn a light on and you'll know where that event occurred. The MyMirror 3 is quite different from the MyMirror 2, let me mention that. Um, it does not have these pretty flashing red lights. It's a small, lightweight, personalized unit that uses um, liquid crystal as its feedback, and it really is good for one or two people looking at it, not a demonstration situation. But it has computer capability so that you can hook it up to uh, your computer and, and see the patterns on the computer and store the patterns and play the patterns back on the computer. So it's a, it's a different version. It's now digital instead of analog, and this is still analog with a digital capacity. Yes, I'd like to ask you, is this used from, from your working with someone, and they're not seeing what's happening, but you're interpreting the results, or can it be used as, as in some cultures that have eyes open meditation? Oh, yeah. Uh, Yes, absolutely. You can work with it as biofeedback, especially if you're wanting to do open-eyed training. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Or it has uh, another form of semi-biofeedback is the freeze button so that you can even close your eyes, just push the button with your thumb, and then open your eyes and look at the pattern that you had. So you don't even have to have, have your eyes closed with it. Yeah, it's, it can be used as a personalized unit also. Um, Yes, yes it can. One more, um, well, I'm going to have to finish, one more little story that, that you made me think of with the groups of people and, and training. I was demonstrating this and teaching actually in a Taoist temple in Taiwan. And that was a very challenging 
situation because the, the audience was not s this receptive, wonderful, aware audience of technology. It was a very rigid uh, spiritual format. And they were very um, resistant to technology and resistant to my machine. And I was a woman. And <laughs> that was probably what they were most resistant to. I'm not sure. <laughs> But again, I did the, the talk and showed the awakened mind pattern, and there was so much resistance. There was, there was a lot of disagreement with me being in their temple uh, in front of their, their spiritual territory. Um, and then I asked for a volunteer to be hooked up, and the teacher volunteered, which I thought was right there, showed who he was and his character and, and ability. Um, and I wired him up, and there was this beautiful, brilliant awakened mind pattern. And all of the students broke out in grins, and the machine worked. <laughs> they used their teacher to validate the machine rather than the machine to validate the teacher, which we do in our society. And I think I, with that, I'm going to need to end. And so um, I'd like to thank Robert for hosting this conference. I think it's a wonderful thing that he's done to bring us all here together. And thank you for coming. Thank you. Whenever I speak with Anna,